Hey, welcome everybody back uh, to Different Lens. Uh, I have the voice of Sombra from Overwatch, uh, Rays from Valorant, and Xenia from Onyx Equinox. Equinox, sorry. Um, Carolina Rabasa, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Very excited to be here. You're funny enough. You're my first Colombian guest in, and we're doing it in, in, in English. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's, it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Okay, so um, one of the first questions that I want to ask you is uh, what has been the best interview that you have done on your Twitch channel that I've seen that you have uh, many different interviews like Steve Bloom, yeah. uh, Trey Baker, all, some of the, your castmates. So uh, what has been the, the, that one that you feel that it's like it was like so funny or great or emotional or whatever? Um, there's a mix. I think I think all of them have been wonderful. A lot of them are from the uh, voice actors from Valorant who I don't know or had never met ever. So mm -hmm. it was literally like talking five minutes before and then giving them like a rundown and then running into the into the interview and literally I'd be discovering things as we're going because I didn't know them. So that was really special to sort of get to know all these characters. One's based in Ghana, a lot of them are based in London. Uh, that was really beautiful to just kind of bring the team together because the game had just come out and we didn't really know each other. Um, I think I really enjoyed having Eric Bauza on because mm -hmm. he's the new voice of like 99% of the Looney Tunes and mm. He is so awesome. He would explain like, if you want to do Daffy Duck, you just gotta be here. And then if you're gonna be dumb, but Bugs Bunny, you gotta be here. And so this, and so this, he would <laughs> sort of like walk you through how to make all the characters sounds. And right. that was like mind blowing. But then uh, JB Blanc, who's on Apex Legends, also, you know, kind of gave me like a tour of you know, the UK, and he's like, so if you start in the east of London, you sound like this, and then you go north, and you sound, and I'm just like, I love accents and, and, and voices so much that I'm geeking right. out as they're explaining this to me, and I just, I find every single person so interesting and unique and fascinating that I can't tell you which was my favorite, because every one of them had something really special and unique to share that just made the interview, you know, uh, very, very particular, so I feel, I feel very grateful to have had them on because I, not only was I doing it for the viewers but it was like a very selfish like I want to get to know you better because I think you're cool so it was really neat to to get to, to know some some people that I didn't really know as well and I've, I've met Nolan North and well I haven't had Nolan on but Troy Baker <laughs> I met a lot of them but but having one hour to ask them questions right. is is special because it doesn't always happen so And, and that's actually really cool because that's also kind of like one of the things that I want to do with the show is kind of get to know mm -hmm. more people in the industry and only voice acting like cosplayer or directors or, yeah. you know, uh, graphic designers or whatever that, that are in the in the uh, nerd culture. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited to, you know, have you and have many different kind of people on. And so um, so moving on to my second question, it was, um, you know, everybody has that one role that kind of made them stand out in the in the cultural zeitgeist what do you think is the one that made you blow up and how many years uh did you feel that it, it got to that point where you know you had that role that you were like okay this is the role that really put me on the map uh, i mean definitely sombra from overwatch mm. i think i mean i had been auditioning i mean i studied I've been acting since I was four years old, not professionally, oh. but I loved it as a kid doing theater. Then I studied theater in college. Then I went one more year in New York for a film academy. Then I auditioned for 10 years. I waited tables for six years while I was doing that. I was doing catering jobs, like anything to pay the bills in New York City. And I would get little gigs, uh, but it wasn't until the 10th year that I booked Sombra. Mm. Not to say that like before nothing happened. Like I worked for Rockstar Games on on GTA V and Max Payne 3. Before that, I, I worked on um, a Disney movie, you know, TV. But none of those roles were like bam. And then Sombra comes out. Well, while I was recording her, I didn't even know Overwatch was a big deal. And then when I went to BlizzCon, it was my first convention ever, and that's where I go. Oh, what's this? And then like, like this so, is serious. Like, yeah, this is serious. And and then that weekend, I got invited to a con in in Houston. And then I was like, oh, this is a, a thing that happens. Like I didn't right. know, you know. So I started kind of educating myself on comic cons and and voice acting and 
I started watching all the nerd stuff to understand like the world that I was being thrown into. So then like that weekend, our, our Twitter grew and then our Instagram started growing. And so I realized, oh, this is a big deal. But it took right. me a while to understand that people would play Overwatch for years. I thought, okay, this might last for a little bit and then goodbye. But it's mm-hmm. like, people still want to meet Sombra. People still want to play Sombra. Uh, it's a crazy thing. I'd never been a part of a video game that just kept on giving, you know? anything really yeah. so that that was it and then after that i've just i've started to understand it more and i, I work on valorant and it's great um and i'm working on other secret video games that Ooh. i can't tell you about but i think it was so that it just like it blew my mind and it blew everybody on overwatch is just like what the heck you know right well yeah. go, actually something that kind of goes along with that point of of conventions and traveling and all that stuff um you have traveled all over the world and um we always learn something different about each culture and about each country. And my question is, what has been like the most shocking or the most like culturally different country that you've visited? I think Kuwait was definitely Mm. very different. I had been already to Jordan. I think my point though with this, you're asking a specific question, but, but my, my point is that, that I learned that, all video game and anime and and Marvel fans are the same. And that sounds mm-hmm. reductive, but everybody just wants to be seen. Everybody just wants to share how a video game affected them. Everybody mm-hmm. comes to me and whether we're speaking Spanish or they're in the Philippines or in Australia or in uh, you know Europe in all the different languages they speak, everybody who loves Overwatch just loves it because it's brought them together to other people all over the world, because they connected to our characters, because they felt represented, because they feel part of a community. And Mm -hmm. that's what's so beautiful, right? Like Kuwait is the most distant and different to my culture, but at the same time, we were all speaking the same language and that they're like, we love Sombra because she's sassy and she's funny and she's sarcastic (laughs) and she has a dark sense of humor. And I had little girls dressed up as Sombra with a hijab and I was like, how crazy and beautiful is that? So right. in the end, it's like they're all super different. And I love learning to say thank you and hello in every language. Mm-hmm. And I've just enjoyed learning about all the different cultures and trying all the different food. But understanding that in the end, we're all humans with beating hearts. And we have the same losses, the same feelings, the same everything, you know? Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. go through heartbreak and Overwatch helped them get out of it. And people lost a parent that they used to play Overwatch with. So now they're playing Overwatch to remember that parent. Like all the stories we hear are that. It's people connecting on a human level and sharing their emotions. And that's what's so freaking beautiful about gaming, you know? So now we have a, a dynamic in, in, in this show that um, we have uh, a set of 20 questions, but I'm going to ask you to uh, pick three. So uh, can you give me three numbers from one to 20? Whoa, okay. Five, mm-hmm. 15, and 13. 5, 15, and 13. Okay, so question number five is... What has been your proudest moment in your profession? <laughs> um, I invited my parents to Comic Con in Colombia, mm. and they had never been, and so they come. They came to Bogota to be with me, and uh, you know, I walked them around the convention and showed them the crazy stuff that they don't understand. Um, and then we did a panel, I did a panel by myself and mm-hmm. they got to sit in on it. And, you know, I think my parents just kept looking around like, what, what why are there so many people? And I was like, because right. they love Overwatch, you know? Um, and then I signed autographs after the panel for like two hours <laughs> and my dad stood right next to a column the whole time standing, just watching me sign autographs. And he'd watch all the interactions. And it was so cute. I don't I think my mom was with my aunt somewhere else, probably sitting down. But he just watched, you know. And then one of the interactions, one of the girls was crying because her partner might die of a terminal illness. And I hugged her and I, you know, gave her the words of encouragement that I could. And, you know, at, at the end, my dad in Spanish, like, what what happened to the girl? that I, I watched her walk off crying and I wanted to hug her. But and I said, no, dad, like, you're a stranger. Don't do that, you know. But... Yeah. Um, he, he kind of was confused why she was crying. And I said, well, you know, he's, she's going through this and blah, blah, blah. But I, mm-hmm. 
you know, I gave her a hug and we did a video for her loved one. And, and months later, this girl wrote to me and said that she was going to be okay. And luckily her girlfriend was not going to die. And, um, but I think it was like, it was cool to get to, it was cool for my parents to see what my convention life is like, because I go to a lot of cons and they sort of understand, but they don't. And so it was neat to just have them witness the weirdness and the beauty of what it is that kids feel when they meet the voice of Sombra, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty cool because they don't get to come to a lot of my screenings or, or movie premieres or whatever. So that was just like like a little window of something strange in my life. And, and that was cool. Okay, so number 15, what is, if you can give us like a, a small rundown of the process of your job. Ooh. Well, um, luckily now I have an agent who gets me mm -hmm. auditions, but I think at the beginning of any actor's career, you're looking for auditions online and you're on websites like New York Castings and LA Actors Access or whatever, like just looking for jobs. But now I'm lucky enough to get auditions through my agency. And so, you know, I just, in the morning, I, I look out for emails that come and uh, it might be two auditions or it might be 10, you know. Um, and now that I live in LA, I, I audition for video games for animation, for commercial stuff, for all sorts of things. So, you know, I'll get into my closet right here um, and I'll lay down the auditions, I'll record and send them off. But some days I don't have auditions, so I don't do anything, you know? Other days I have a booking and so that means they chose me for a job, which means I'll go into the studio or I'll record here depending on what they want and, you know, we'll play with the character. And my favorite are animations. I mean, I love mm. video games, but it's a lot of screaming and a lot of just like, commands and I think mm -hmm. I like animation because uh, we get to sound like crazy characters like this or she's a lady who speaks like this you know and so uh, right. if I'm if I'm not recording one specific character they might have me doing three so they say okay what did you think about this character and I'll say oh I I, I thought she could be a smoker or I thought she could talk like she's tired all the time I don't know you know <laughs> we kind of throw spaghetti at the wall and and see what they like so mm -hmm. I feel like that's a very creative part of the job that I absolutely love but it's not always so glorious. There are weeks when we don't have any jobs and uh, I, I keep busy regardless. I'm always trying to meet people that work in the industry or um, network, connect, uh, see friends that I haven't seen in a while to like, if they're actors too, you know, that all of that helps for, for future jobs. And mm -hmm. I love recommending voices. If I know somebody who speaks Tagalog, I wanna recommend my friend, you know? Uh, so I think that it's just about a lot of like socializing, you know, without without re reducing it to just that. It, it's it's a lot of like staying on people's radars, and so I think I'm I'm pretty decent at that. But now also with with video games, I get to go to Comic Con, so I have about if I'm lucky two a month, and I'll travel mm. to different places. Um, sometimes it might be you know St. Louis, Missouri, or it might be Amsterdam. Um, right. which is always exciting. I just went to one in Vancouver and it was my first time there. So that was really cool. But, but also I'm auditioning for film and TV. So I might have to, if I'm, I have dinner plans and then I get an audition that's six pages for the next day, I have to cancel dinner and I learn my lines and, and prepare for a big audition. So I still want to do film and TV and I, I produced my first film this year in the pandemic last year. So, uh, you know, it's, it's about like, how do we keep our soul alive with all the art that we want to do? Because, Voice acting is great, but I also miss film acting. So you got to make it happen somehow, you know? Of course, of course, of yeah. course. And, and and something that you touch upon that I think it's really cool about voice acting specifically is that uh, you get to meet a lot of people that you can, you recommend them for voices. Like you get to, it, it's not so like, oh, I want to, it's all about me. It's all, always always all about the community like i've yeah. had people that i'm like i i really recommend this voice even though i wish i could do it it's not the fit is like my voice is not the right fit so you know what hey let somebody else do the job and they're gonna do amazing and you know yeah. they might recommend you after for the job and so it's i think it's it's really a, a sense of community that people feel that yeah. that uh we can work together and it, there's more than enough work for everybody it's a very generous community and mm -hmm. and you know and sometimes even if I audition for a, a, a role that I think I'm right for I'll make sure to tell my friends hey did you get this project in this role because you're right for it too and they'll mm -hmm. choose whoever they choose but I feel like if you're not auditioning for that you should be so I feel like keeping an eye out for for friends and and people you think are right or or I've gotten auditions for Afro Latinos and I go hey guys I'm not no. Afro Latino, but I have three no. friends who are and don't have agents. Please let them audition. So I like to keep an eye out like that, you know. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, going on to to number thirteen, um, what character uh, in in any 
genre would you love to portray? Ooh. I mean, it would be awesome if Sombra could be a you know, live-action hero. That would be really cool. Ooh, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, I think that... I think that I would love to, I mean, we're living in a world of superheroes now. So I think that I'm enjoying seeing more and more superheroes that are misfits and that have, you know, serious defects and insecurities. And so uh, we have yet to see a really cool Hispanic superhero. And that would be really neat, whether it's animation or live action. And and I think it's important that they're not perfect, right? I love that. Mm-hmm they can be a little awkward or, you know, that's what I like about Deadpool. That's what I like about, you know, obviously Peacemaker, they're, they're, they have, they have issues, right? Um, right. And I know that Green Lantern, uh, female version, has social anxiety issues. And so they talk about that in the animation. And I think the more we normalize these things or help people find the hero that they can connect to, the more they'll feel seen, you know? So that would be a great thing as well. I think that I was very lucky to, get to read a script and produce this film that I did. Um, it's called Morgan's Mask and her character is a gamer and cosplayer who has to go through the pandemic alone. Mm. And so she gets quite depressed and, and goes through a series of things and then has to, you know, find her, her passion again in life and, and get out of that dark hole. And I think that, um, I guess my point is I want to be able to make projects that people can relate to and hopefully get inspired by to, either get themselves out of that hole they're in or get out of that abusive relationship or or find what makes them happy again because we forget along the way. So that's, in the end, if I play a superhero or just a, or just a mom, you know, she, she's not just a mom, she's an inspiring person. So that's, that's what I'm striving for right now in film and TV. Um, and I think video games is doing it well too because they're creating three-dimensional characters that are really interesting and and they're mm-hmm. not just i'm a badass chick with a gun and i talk like this you know they're not all michelle rodriguez they're they're right. very very uh dynamic and and not that michelle rodriguez is not she is absolutely amazing <laughs> but that's the prototype for all the right. badass chicks michelle rodriguez type and i right. think that all those badass characters come in different shapes and forms and with different with different attributes so we never get to where we are alone uh, it, it always takes people that believe in us that want that they want to uh, help us along the way. So I have a, a, a four questions that I want to ask about that. The first one is, uh, who is the person that you thank the most for getting you into the business? The most? I mean, I have to thank my parents because you know, growing up in Colombia, most people go into like engineering or administrative, whatever, or finance, you know, and, and I was a weirdo since I was young and my parents knew I was a good actor or that that's what I love to do. So when I came to, when it came time to audition for, you know, colleges, they were like, yeah, you're going to study acting because that's what you love and you're going to succeed at it because you love it so much. There's no question, you know? Uh, so I think that support in a, in a country that wasn't so supportive of the arts was really cool. But God, there's so many, you know, there's so many, like my, my, my acting teachers in Colombia when I, since I was four to then when I was in fourth grade to sixth grade to my professors in college. And then even once I was out in the real world auditioning, you know, you sometimes hit these blocks where you're bombing every audition. And I just remember my one good friend, Manuel Oseli, he's a Venezuelan film director. And he just said, you have to remember what you love about this and stop worrying about what's going wrong. It's just like, what, what got you into this in the first place? And it's kind of like remind, remembering why you love it so much to help you through the hard times because there are more hard times than good times when you're a struggling artist, you know? And so just remembering that that's your, your goal and, and why you love it is, is really important. And we forget because we're just trying to make ends meet and, you know, and we get told no so many times we start questioning if we're good at it. And I think that mm-hmm. just having the, a, a good supportive community that believes in you is if it's friends, actors, mentors, whoever, you know, uh, yoga teachers, that's all, it's all important because they, they all make up who we are. So there that, isn't that can, one, one person. That, that kind of also uh, leads into my second question and, and who has been the person that has supported you the most, uh, whether it's in acting or in life or, you know, going through relationships or yeah. whatever. I, I think every, every, every step of the way it's different, right? Of course, my parents and my sisters, I have two sisters are always there for me and they know when there's ups and downs and, uh, 
But 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 every step of the way has been a little bit different. You know, when I was waiting tables, I would bond with those waiters and I'd be like, yo, I, I went in on this audition. Or, I met Almodovar. That's my dream. I want to work with him. And so I remember beaming that day and my waiter friends like, yeah, and one yeah. of them was covering for me. And so, we, we you know, you, you're just like, you're, you're, you're hustling in New York City. And then you move on to another job and, you know, and then you meet somebody else who's like being supported there. And when Overwatch came out, you know, Anjali Bimani was a huge support. She's the voice of Symmetra, and she also is Rampart in Apex Legends. And she she was just there for me because I was going through the biggest heartbreak of my life at the mm. same time as the characters blowing up. And so you go, how is life so ironic? You can't enjoy the good stuff because you're brokenhearted. Like, no. so she was there just helping me move along. And so I feel like every step of, of the way, there's different people that just support you in different ways. Whether mm -hmm. it's like helping you emotionally or whether they're like a new roommate, you know. So it's it's just a it's a big group of, of wonderful people that that lend that their... all chip in to to, to yeah. help you. Yeah. So um, the third uh, question it's it's going back a little bit further back uh, into your youth and it's uh, what song reminds you of your youth? Oh my god. Procura coquetearme más si no reparo de lo que te haré. Uh, I love salsa obsessively, and Chichi Peralta is like música tropical. I don't know if it's salsa, but uh, right. I just I I just danced recently, uh, and I love salsa dancing. So I think any any salsa song, Richie Ray, Bobby Cruz, El Gran Combo de Puerto Rico, eh, Nietzsche, you know, mm -hmm. they're all just like that. Those all remind me of my childhood. But then there's also like the Beatles and ABBA because my parents would play that stuff too. So mm. I'm a hodgepodge of a lot of crazy music. Cool, cool, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and the fourth one is uh, if you could t talk to your younger self, what would you tell that person? Wow, you know, chill the frick out. No, <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's just a reminder that the career takes a long time. So mm -hmm. you really have to enjoy every step of the way. Like... I remember if that one audition didn't happen, then you think it's the end of the world. And it's like, nah, girl, you're going to have a thousand more auditions that are not going to happen. So just keep doing what you're doing. Every day is a new day. And like, everything's going to teach you something. And you're not going to make it big when you're 18. You might, right? Justin Bieber did. But like, I'm, I'm 36 and I'm still making it and figuring it out, you know? And so I think it's just like knowing that it's every... Every step of the way is a learning tidbit that you're throwing in your backpack or whatever. And and you have to enjoy it all. Like nothing, nothing's the end of the world when you don't when you don't get it. We we put so much pressure on that one commercial that we didn't book or that one TV show and and then it turns into, you know, seventy five thousand. And I think I put a lot of pressure on myself for work that had to happen instead of like, okay, I did my best. Moving on, you know. Um we forget to enjoy all of life the process and, and of i it, think yeah. having a life is important doing your yeah. travels enjoying going dancing like not it can't all just be work because we that happens to actors a lot we just we focus on the work and we forget that life happens and mm -hmm. life is a, a a big influence on our work so the more experiences we have the more we're going to be a better actor you know thank you so much for 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 your time for your crazy answers that are so awesome <laughs> um Uh, is there any project that you can talk about that you may want to plug in, maybe your movie or any other project? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm excited about Morgan's Mask. We're still finishing editing and submitting to festivals, but I'd love to, you know, figure out how to release it to all the gamers and cosplayers that might enjoy it. Um, so all that information will be on my Instagram whenever it's ready. Uh, I'm currently working on a Disney series called Hamster and Gretel Ooh. by the same creator of Phineas and Ferb, Dan Povenmire. And I, I play a Venezuelan mom of Gretel. So uh, it's a fun accent. It's a fun character. That's really exciting. It's probably coming out in the summer. Um, I'm constantly working on animations. I worked on a new one called Big Nate for Nickelodeon that's coming out soon. And I'm working on three video games that are super top secret. Mm. Uh, so when they come out, I'll share them on my Instagram. But Overwatch 2 is in the works. We don't know when it'll come out. We're hoping for date soon there's a lot of a lot of animation stuff happening that's really exciting um and uh the rest we'll find out tomorrow you know like you never know i could book something tonight or not for another month so 
we'll see. But I'm, I feel very grateful to be constantly working and and to be putting out really fun content. Like it's it's exciting to to play such fun characters in animation. So I got to start working on anime with you. That's my oh, next goal. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's always a good uh, career to jump into. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, um, by the way, what are your, uh, if you can tell them your social media, uh, uh, how can they find you on social media? Yeah, my Insta is Ravasa, my last name. My Twitter is Carolina Ravasa. My Twitch, which I don't use too much now, is Carolina Ravasa. But there's fun interviews on there. And my YouTube channel is Hispanglo Saxon. It's based mm. on, on a web series that I do. I do a lot of different sketch characters. And uh, there's all my interviews go up there with Valorant and Overwatch actors and just fun content. So it's you want to peruse some weird stuff you can go there <laughs> cool yep. well thank you very much for for your time and for your disposition and for sharing uh your life with us um everybody watching thank you so much for being here once again uh again we're be we're going to be posting this uh every friday so keep a lookout on that and remember to look at life through a different lens mm -hmm.